let's face it, corporate America does not have the best reputation these days. But one program giving students the skills to succeed in the business world is still a smashing success. Started more than two decades ago in the Bronx, the initiative has taken off, and now the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, also known as NIFTY, has hundreds of thousands of graduates around the globe. The BBC's Philippa Thomas reports on the students and their award-winning ideas. In the projects of the Bronx, there's not a lot of opportunity for teenagers to think big. In low-income neighborhoods like this, the focus is as much on survival as success. But 23 years ago, a corporate executive turned teacher found a fresh way to engage them. A lot of children are raised uh, in, in lower income communities, uh, have less resources, and they develop what, are, what I call street smarts. And street smarts can be turned into business smarts, and that's a, that's a beautiful concept that can be used globally. Oh, cool. We took Steve Mariotti back to the school where he started the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. The school store was there, and that's where we founded Nifty. Running business boot camps at an early age. Just a few miles away, and what a change of scene. This is Times Square in New York. It says bright lights, big city, and the chance to realize a dream for 28 teenagers, all competing for the grand cash prize. At Awesome Cupcakes, we can provide a new cupcake experience with exotic so flavors. I target my customers. I have a website. I go to, I go to um, dog parks. Nifty now trains teenagers across America, bringing the brightest together each year to pitch their rival business plans. We create curiously creative culinary confections. The winner earns $10,000 and enough recognition to raise much more, making it a tense day for contenders, family and friends, until the judges winnow it down to the final three. Number one is Kaylee Rollins. Khalif Rollins is selling shirts from his California garage, sending messages of urban pride and leadership. Number two is Zoe Damasella. Zoe Damasella sells custom-made clothing in Chicago, already getting past her years of poverty and homelessness. I actually sold my first dress for $13. Not kidding. $13 for a whole dress. And it taught me, you know, how to manage my money, how to really become a real business. And our third semi-finalist is Scott Pavia. And Scott Pavia is pitching his services to fellow teenagers as a tax advisor. Now the three will be judged by a panel of entrepreneurs who've already shown how to make it. All of them have amazing ideas and all of them, I'm sure, have their heart in it, you know, their passions in it, and it's going to be hard to make a decision. But sometimes, you know, your gut just tells you something. My name is Khalif Rollins. And their gut instinct was to back Khalif, who's thrown everything he has into free county shirts, even employing his mother as chief financial officer. And what are you going to pay your mom? <laughs> My love. <laughs> For students like Khalif, this award is both a practical step up and a boost in morale. For the initiative's Steve Mariotti, the United States was just the beginning. We have 280,000 graduates which we're very proud of. This year we'll work with 60,000 children globally. What are the countries? A New Zealand, China, uh, India, the, the Netherlands, Israel, uh, Germany, and South Africa. Gosh, you know, all of it started here. All of it started in a classroom right here. His pitch from the Bronx, why shouldn't every child born poor learn how to start a business before they turn 18? Philippa Thomas, BBC News, New York. Now to 